I, okay, the slideshow is not working, so I'm just going to carry on like this. So, uh, my name is Mary. I'm one half of Elite Investor Group, so it's Andrew and I. Um, I'm a qualified architect um, and a lecturer at both Leeds and Manchester University. And um, we set up Elite Investor Group because um, in our lives, uh, be, be being architects, having um, being involved in property made sense for us. And um, in terms of property and Elite Investor Group, we've got um, basically two different ethoses um, and it's about sustainable well, well-being and the first is for people to provide really healthy spaces through good design for people and also for the planet and um, when we were very early on when you're a student in architecture you learn that um, 46 percent of the world's pollution is actually down to buildings so it may be different parts of buildings or the running of of the building and the building of the building but that's something that stuck with us um, a lot and we want to provide homes and um, that are um, energy efficient and provide homes that use passive energy so that's mainly our ethos but using SketchUp, I've used SketchUp in many a projects throughout my career um, and I've had, um, I've worked in many a buildings, many a types of buildings. If you're a Londoner, um, I've worked on the un London Underground, which is um, Tottenham Court Road Station. That was nice and fun, lots of engineering work. Um, that was back in, I think, 2011. And then um, if you guys are from Manchester, and there's some Mancunians in the house. I worked on the lovely Corn Exchange building, which is a gorgeous historical building um, in Manchester. And if you are from Manchester and you're feeling um, that you, uh, you might be a bit short in change, I'll give you a little bit of a snippet. <laughs> the Corn Exchange sign um, on top of the Corn Exchange is made from real gold. <laughs> Um, so, so there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a treat, just in case you didn't know. Um, I've also worked in Aust uh, Sydney, Australia, and the lovely images on the top right-hand corner is from a um, residential complex that uh, we carried out for the um, mayor of Shanghai. He wanted a very, very high-end um, Art Deco building, and all of these visualizations that you see, they were first they first originated in SketchUp. So that's kind of why I'm showing you, and they get highly rendered and visualized and. Moved on and the beauty of SketchUp is that you can kind of uh, kids can pick it up I know lots of people have said oh my kids use SketchUp which is really interesting but it's just a really really nice tool that you can be really flexible in and work with and um, this tool so it's it's really good to use but what I'm going to kind of tell you about today is tips and tricks so you can actually use SketchUp really efficiently um, so yeah, I've worked on um, lots of different projects and high rise, low rise. Um, and at the moment, obviously, we're kind of a lot smaller than the um, practice work that we've carried out. Um, and we focus with the investor group on HMOs. But why SketchUp? And um, I'm not an affiliate at all to SketchUp. <laughs> so um, if you find it really interesting, I absolutely love it. So if you find it like it's easy to use and stuff like that, it's really, really convenient. So why SketchUp? So first of all, um, it's important to understand 3D um, dimension planning. So space planning doesn't just occur at a flat plan level, it occurs in three dimension because your um, space are three dimensional and it stops abortive work because sometimes when something is seen as a plan especially with builders they can't actually visualize it so it's really really good tool to visualize things really easily another thing is to test and develop so um, it's really good to test variations of different things. You can really easily uh, move things, manipulate things into three, your three-dimensional space. Um, thirdly, um, visualize. So if you have clients, if you've got um, angel investors, etc., it's really good, it's a really good tool, or JV investors, it's a really good tool to um, 
to show people what your visualizations are and what you're intending to do with your project. And it brings your project um, to life. And you don't need to spend lots and lots of money to, um, to kind of get externals. You can do it yourself, especially when it's at a domestic stage where you don't want to spend a lot of money. Once it gets to kind of bigger developments, I think it's a really good idea to, um, to outsource it. Okay, and then fourth, obviously, um, create marketing material. So I know um, lovely Carolina's talked a lot about marketing material for us. Um, a SketchUp itself can do visualizations, so it can do renders. You can plug something in called V-Ray or Lumion to do renders, or you can export it into different systems and carry out renders. So they're like a really high res visualizations, which I'll quite quickly show you. And um, so why SketchUp? So this is kind of an elevation of a building. We don't understand anything about the definition. We don't see that there's a lot of layers. We don't see if anything's pulling in and out. And then when we create the, um, the SketchUp for this, the model for this, so this is what SketchUp can do. It can really clearly show you all the different levels, all different boundaries, and it can also give you sunlight. So SketchUp's really good with sunlight. There's a lot of sunlight testing and studies you can do on it, because when you get a bit more advanced with SketchUp, you can geolocate SketchUp. So it'll actually go to the exact location in the world that you want your building to be in, which is really, really useful. And um, especially with if you're actually involved in doing bigger buildings rather than just domestic buildings and uh, doing sunlight studies and some parts of it is really important to see if um, you're impeding on other people's sunlight. Okay. And this is when um, SketchUp gets, um, we render SketchUp, and this has actually been rendered into another program, but you can see that now it makes very, very good marketing um, material. And it's all been taken from SketchUp that you're going to learn today. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, more marketing material to understand materials. And then also SketchUp provides um, cut sections so you can actually cut sections through your buildings and into parts of your buildings so you can really explain different materials and different spaces and different levels within SketchUp. Um, in terms of tender process, so SketchUp takes, and like 3D modeling, it takes precedent in um, tender processes. So when you've got kind of, you're building, whether it's domestic or whether it's um, bigger units of buildings, um, what we always do and I've always done in practice is we don't, we don't just give um, plan sections and elevations of stuff. We also give three-dimensional um, modeling of uh, the space as well. And this really helps. So you can put this alongside your plans and sections. It really helps the builder and the contractor understand exactly what you're after. Because like I was saying before, with plan sections, elevations, because it's not three-dimensional, that you always go back to site and you realize that they've made so many mistakes <laughs> that could have been um, amended if there was 3D uh, visualization of the work. And so if you look at the visual on the bottom left hand corner with that lovely expensive fireplace. So this, um, this apartment block that was, uh, that we designed and built for the mayor of Shanghai in Sydney, each apartment cost, um, I think it was 13 million. <laughs> and at the time we were calculating and um, I think I could afford one square meter of a single apartment. So just maybe a, a single tile slab. Um, so yeah, so that visualization is materialized like this. So they knew exactly what to do on site, the builders, the contractors, and th th therefore they provided exactly what we wanted, which was great. So, um, as I was saying is with Elite Investor Group, we are involved in HMOs, so we're not involved ourselves in such high-end um, designs. Um, so last week I was, I think it was Monday actually, um, I was, um, we have, we have a HMO sort of coming to the end of its build and um, we needed to provide some images to send to um, a group of doctors who are interested in moving into the place. 
and um, the, the house isn't quite finished and there's no furniture in it right now um, and but what because there's a month gap into um, the kind of the people moving in and stuff like that I wanted to quickly create visualizations and um, so I can send it over to them so this is a lot more different domestic scale I couldn't just send them a bunch of plans so I just spent one evening um, building up different rooms and visualizations of rooms and this is kind of what we'll be looking at today okay so before we start um, using SketchUp, a SketchUp is a three-dimensional um, element. So when you start SketchUp, you'll be like, oh my God, this is overwhelming. What am I gonna do and what am I gonna draw? Um, so don't get a writer's block. There's three different things you can do. So always um, go and take a, have a measured survey so you know exactly what you're going to draw. Don't go into SketchUp not knowing what you're going to draw because you probably end up not drawing anything. Um, so you can, you can do your measure service from scratch or you can import um, you can import plans into SketchUp as well. So you can import them as images or DWGs. You can import them as images with free SketchUp. So um, considering the interior layout, have a rough idea of what you're gonna do with the interior layout. So again, you go in there, you can do a basic drawing of it. And then thirdly, research the look and feel of the space. So look for inspiration for the look and feel. Um, and these are some, so in terms of inspiration, I look at Pinterest, which is absolutely wonderful. I'm sure you all do too. And kind of just get an idea and I can then change that idea and verify it. And then for um, colors, etc., I look at Adobe Color, which is really useful. Um, it's all free to use and you guys can use it as well. And also for inspiration, you can download Dulux Visualizer, take live photos of different spaces and you can put colors on it. That helps you visualize the space as well. Okay, so how to start using SketchUp. So there's different uh, SketchUps you can use. And the best one is to download the web, SketchUp web, that's completely free and you can use that free. There's a pro which costs, um, but I think for hopefully what you guys are going to be using it, you probably don't need the pro. Um, I've also given you some links to tutorials and I can put that on the bottom of um, kind of the conversation. Um, they are, there's a, they're really good tutorials to watch. Um, kind of to get you going and to get you set up and then you can be specific on what tutorials you're gonna watch. Okay, so before we go 3D, we'll go 2D on SketchUp and we'll get started. So I will stop the share and I will share my SketchUp. Lovely, can everyone hear me and everything's all right? Perfect, okay. So this is our SketchUp interface. Um, and so looking at SketchUp, if you're on the um, SketchUp online version, you'll have a lo lovely lady. I've got a lovely gentleman on the side here. And what I'm going to talk you through is the ribbon on the left hand side and then the ribbon on the right hand side. And through out us designing this room, I'm going to take you through the, all of the tools going downwards of the ribbon. Okay, so the first thing is first is the ribbon on the left hand side is your most important ribbon. Okay, and the clicker. So can you see I've got the arrow here. So that's the most important most of the time when you're in a static position, you're always clicking on that arrow. So you don't when you're not using anything or you don't want to manipulate anything using the arrow. One thing to point out with SketchUp is when, it, when you first download SketchUp, it will prompt you and say what units you're using. So please ensure you use millimeters, which gives you a really, really accurate um, measurement. And it gives you centimeters, millimeters, meters, but SketchUp itself is in inches because it's an American system. But so all you gotta do is you need to select millimeters. Okay, 
So going down on this ribbon, underneath the um, select button is your paint bucket, and we'll go through the paint bucket. Underneath that are a set of drawing tools. So kind of the eight here that I'm circling is your set of drawing tools, which is pen, squares, circles, arches, arcs, etc. Underneath that is your manipulation tools. So they're the tools that you use to manipulate, push, push pull, move, copy, rotate, etc. Underneath those tools um, is your measurement tool. So they're different ways of measuring. And beneath that is your navigation tools. So if I click on orbit, um, you can see that I can move things around and we're orbiting. And then this here clicker here is a pan. It just moves it flat on across. And then you've got various zooms, etc. And the, the, beneath that, right at the bottom, is your cameras. Okay, so you can put your camera down, you can view camera in different ways, and you can do walkthroughs. Right, okay, so now that we know the left hand side ribbon, we will get going. So, as you can see, you've got X and Y, Z axes, and it's the blue, green, and red axes, and they're really important axes, and they'll help you guide all your drawings. So, when we start, we start at plan view because if you start 3d sometimes your lines go in different directions so always start in plan view and we draw a basic plan and in the free version on the on the dropper on the left on the right hand side will be something that looks like these little houses and these little houses just give you different angles so we want to go to top view so that top view gives you a flat plan view and that's what we want to start so I'm going to start drawing my plan very, very simply. So the first thing I do is I go to the line tool. So that gives you a pencil. And all I'm going to do is in the space I've got here, I'm gonna click. And then I'm just gonna, so click, don't click and drag, just click, move your mouse across and it gives you a red line. And then if I do it that way exactly, it gives me a, green line it means that i'm using i'm going off exactly on the grids which is really good so I go across and then can you see the left the right hand side bottom corner that gives you the dimension so there's no need to guess the dimensions when you've got your line that's stretching out all you have to do is type in the dimensions. So the dimension of my room, I know, is four meters across. So you translate that into millimeters, which is four zero zero zero, and it gives me my line. And all I have to do now is this kind of carries on. So this carries on, and I carry on with it. So um, I know the height of my room, or I should say, the width of my room is three point nine. So all I could do is type in 3.9 and then press enter and it gives me 3.9. If you want to stop this line from continu continuing, all you have to do is press escape and it stops. But we want to continue so you can just, can you see that the green little circle there, it means that I have an endpoint and I can click on it. So it's quite intelligent. So I click on that endpoint and then I move across and then I type in four meters and then it carries on and I can create my square. So as soon as you create a shape, so something that's end to end meets, then that makes it a surface. So if we go three dimensionally and click on orbit on our ribbon, you can see that this becomes a surface. So we'll go back to the plan view and I'm going to continue and draw my basic room plan. So I think um, I normally draw the whole house, but for the purpose of this, we'll just draw the plan. I think drawing the whole house makes it really accurate because then, then your um, walls, internal walls and external walls and stuff like that um, are very helpful. Okay, 
So on the ribbon, again, what we can see if we go to, now if we go to our manipulation tools, which is kind of three spots down, there's something called offset. So we click on offset. So what that does, offset creates external uh, walls. So you can create walls in the space. It kind of offsets. So if you can see when something is selected, it highlights it in blue. So it can, it can highlight. So it's saying that it can offset this. So you click on it and it creates that shape exactly, but as big or as small as you want. So I'm gonna say that my external walls for this space, it's not that thick, I'll just say it's one, one, 150 mil. Okay, so I've got my external walls. Another way to draw, so um, I've got a chimney breast in this space, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure. So if you can see on the left side ribbon, I've got something that is a measuring tape. But that doesn't draw anything, it just gives you guidelines. So I've got my external wall, but now I know I've got a chimney breast. So at the internal point here, I click, and then I say, I know my chimney breast is 1200 from my inside wall and then I click and it gives me a score a, a little score so if you can see that cross it gives me that cross so you go back to your pen tool you click on that cross I know that my um, chimney breast is 350 and it's 1200 wide and then click so that's all finished. So can you see on SketchUp, when something is outside of a, an element or a surface, um, it's the profile line is darker. When it's inside a surface, the profile line, the thickness of the line is lighter. So that kind of helps you determine if something's inside or outside a surface. So that's my chimney breast. Now I'm going to delete this line because I don't need that line, that's just part of my wall. So there's two ways to delete. One, you can select it. So obviously you're on the selector tool, you can just select it and press delete. Or you can go to what's called pink, which is the eraser on the ribbon. And you can also delete it with the eraser. I find the eraser sometimes isn't great, but there we go. So now I've got my um, external wall of the room. So this part is really, really important. Now that I've got this plan, I don't want my walls and my floor to operate the, together. So it's something that you guys should really, really work with, however simple your model is, and lots of people don't know about it. Um, but it's really important that you kind of you get the hang of it and do it all the time. It's creating things in groups. So I've got my external wall and I want to create this external wall and make it a group. So by so you can click on different surfaces and it selects it. If you double click on a surface, it click it clicks on the it selects the surface and it selects all the lines around that surface. And then when your, your select arrow is on the surface, all you have to do is right click. And this right click gives you lots of different information, but the information we're primarily concerned about is to make component or group. And we want to make group, we'll talk about components in a couple of minutes. Okay, so all you do is you click group and it's created a group for your walls so they can work independently. Now I want to create the floor and I do the same and I create a group. Okay, so now um, what SketchUp does is creates everything in this really weird blue and we don't really like this really weird blue. Um, we want to have a really base level um, a kind of plan and drawing so we want to turn everything white. So what can we can do is so we can look at this three dimensionally if we want. So we've got our 
um, groups now, group of wall and group of floor. All we have to do to get into a group, so you have to get inside a group and you double click it and then you're in a group. So what we do now is we go to, go back to our ribbon and if you remember the paint bucket, so that's your color. So we'll talk about the colors. So this gives you, so there's a, a brick form here that kind of tells you what options in um, different materials you have. Um, and the little home button here shows you what different colors there are in currently in your SketchUp model. And all these colors are that gentleman's outfit and glasses. <laughs> um, we don't really have any color on our plan itself. And then when you click on the drop down, this is where it gets fun. So you can actually um, add lots of different materials like blinds, brick cladding, carpets and textiles. They're a bit retro, to be honest, these textiles. Um, crayon, so just like normal colors, roofing. So you can have lots and lots of different kind of textures and colors and et cetera that you can work with, which is great. So we'll go back to our home. At the moment, I just want to turn everything white. So you've got a choice to go through to pick very exact, accurate colors. So you can go to different areas and pick colors. I just want a simple white. So I'm going to click on that white and I'm going to click on the form. So all you've got to do is click and click and then it's all colored. To come out of a group, you just need to click outside of that group or you just press um, uh, escape. Now the walls are white, but my floor is not white. So I'm going to double click my floor to enter the group. And then I'm going to paint that white as well. So it's really simple to use. Okay, right. So now that we've got our, um, We've got our walls and we've got the floor. One thing is missing um, and it's actually my door. So I can't come into this space until I put my door in. So we're gonna go into the group exactly the same way. We're going to click the line tool and I'm going to draw a doorway. So all you gotta do is click across, that's my doorway. And I'm going to also create a window. So we're just creating lines at the moment. There we are. And to, you can even draw your doorway. So if you actually want to use SketchUp as a drawing tool, um, because you know you want to have plans, you can do so. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the square or the rectangle tool instead. And then we're going to click, we're going to drag. Can you see the numbers on the bottom right hand corner? There's two different numbers. So it's giving you the length and the width. So all you gotta do is my door is 800 wide and then comma and it's 50 deep because fire door, enter. So it gives me that door. And you just delete the extra surface that's created. And then you can do the arch of the door as well. I'm just gonna measure that because it's a bit small. That's right. Um, so the arch, so now moving down these um, drawing tools, as you can see, and then that is the arch. So that's a three-point arc. It first clicks your radius. So can you see when you go to a circle, it gives you a really nice protractor so you know how you're working and where you're working. So that's the radius. So you start on the top, then you click on the top, and then it really nicely draws you the arc of the door. What SketchUp always does is tries to fill in spaces. It always tries to create surfaces, but because we've got floor already, we can just get rid of this surface. Okay, so now we've got a door as well. Perfect. So now we can move three-dimensionally. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to go to an, in our orbit and we're going to look at this three dimensionally and we're going to start to pull our walls up. So we're interested in the walls, double click on the group and we're moving down to here, the um, manipulation tools and there's something called push and pull. So we click on push and pull and when you hover, you can see that it's highlighted in blue. So you just click on it, you drag your mouse up. And my height, the height of my walls is 2.4 meters. And remember it's in millimeters. So we go up 2.4 and we've got a wall. And then same here, you drag it up. And then we've got a little window here. We're just gonna move that up a little bit. And then also we've got our lovely door. We're going to be using 2.1 for our door, which is standard size. So perfect, now we've got our room. There we go. So now we can do things that are a bit more fun because we've got the, more, the layout of our building, which, uh, our room, which is great. So we can go back to um, the kind of the left, the right hand side tools a bit more, and we'll discuss the right hand side tools a bit more. Which, uh, firstly, let's have a look at this space and think, right, okay, I'm going to add some materials in this space now. So, we'd start, we'll start with um, some nice colored walls. So, maybe I will do some feature walls, and obviously, I'm going to pick my favorite color teal. So if I just go like this and I click on the model, um, for some reason my door is on, which is interesting. It just, it, it either picks the whole thing or pick, pick something random. So you need to go back to inside your walls and then you need to click on whatever wall you want to turn teal. So you're just clicking, that's as easy as that. So I like these feature walls, I think they're quite nice. I'm going to keep with that and then I can all also go to the floor. So I'm going to double click on my floor and I think, okay, this is going to be a bedroom. So I might put a carpet on it. So like we said before, you go to that brick and you go to the drop down list and I'm going to go to carpet and textiles. And they're a bit jazzy, but I think I'll collect, I'll select this carpet. Um, and put that on. So can you see, I think it's a bit dark. I'm not that much of a fan. Um, I'd quite like it a bit lighter. So what you can do now is you can go to that little home button and you can see because it's in the model, it's here. So all you have to do is double click it. When you double click it, it, it tells you, do you want it lighter? Do you want it a completely different color? How do you want it? So here you can go to lighter and darker and I'm just going to drag this across to make it much lighter. So we've got a nice light carpet, a bit lighter than that. But not too light because it'll get dirty. <laughs> okay, so now we've got the walls and we've got floor. Um, now we can probably put um, a bit of furniture into it. So. I'm going to test, so I'm gonna say, okay, um, because we've got two walls here, I'm gonna say, okay, which one would a bed fit into well? I think I might go for that wall, um, because I can put other things on the back wall. So what I'll do is I'm gonna test if a bed fits in there. So all I have to do is I'll go back to my line tool, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle to see if the bed fits in. So I'm going to I'm going to say okay, I want a standard double bed. So um, it's 135 centimeters. That's not too bad. Um, 190 long, and then 135. So there we go. Again, we've created that square and I think it's not too bad. 
And um, so I'm going to turn this into a group again. Double click, right click, turn into group so it doesn't um, merge into anything else. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it. So I want my bed about 500 high. And I think that's pretty good. And I think I've got quite nice space around it. Okay. So now instead of drawing bed sheet and bedding, etc., I'm going to be a bit clever and I'm going to download this. So this is where it gets really, really fun is that on the ribbons that you have on the um, right hand side, you've got something called components. And components takes you straight to the online warehouse. So it's called the 3D warehouse, which is lots of lovely people have created lots of great, great things already. Even IKEA furniture, made.com furniture, etc. And all you have to do is bring it into your model. So I'm I'm looking for a nice um, nice bedding. So I'm going to say bed and so it's buffering which means that it's coming from online and you get to select from lots and lots of different types of beds uh, I quite like the one there so all you have to do is click on the image and um, if you click on the information it kind of takes you to the information and click on the image sometimes a big window comes up and you just click download so i want that bed with its bedding and then it's downloading it for me now when it comes in try to click away from the rest of your model it means that it doesn't mess around with your model and you can change it and manipulate it away from your model and then bring it into your model so there we go it's trying to come in just click a couple of times away from it. There we go. Okay, so our bed is here. So that's downloaded bed. It's quite nice. I don't really like the wooden element of the bed, so I might get rid of that. And I need to rotate it, so we're going to rotate the bed round. So all I'm going to do to rotate it is if we go back to our ribbon on the um, left hand side below. So you've got move and then you've got rotate. So we're going to click on rotate. And again, it gives you that protractor. And de depending on what surface you're on, the protractor has a different color. So I want to move it on the blue surface. So you click. You click on the top and then you move it. And I want to move it 90 degrees. Can't actually see 90 degrees, but hopefully that's around about it. Okay, now this is a component. So it's in a component warehouse. So the difference between groups and components are components are intelligent. So they come and if you manipulate, if you, if you, um, have two beds, three beds, six beds in your house, and you suddenly decide, actually, all my beds are too big, I want to change the size of the beds. All you have to do is change the size of one bed and every single bed will change. So components are really intelligent. Um, so what I'm going to do is, and you can create your own components as well. So I'm gonna go into, click into the component, and it's got lots of different things on different levels. So I don't actually like this brown thing, which is the frame. So I'm just going to delete it. I'm just interested in the bedding. So that's my bedding. And then to come out of a group or a component, you just press escape. So now that we've got the bedding, we want to put it in the, on the bed, obviously. So we're going to go to the move tool. So again, on the left hand side the ribbon, you have something called move copy. So you click on that and then you click on the edge of um, your component. It's normally good to create uh, to click on the bottom edge, otherwise it tries to stick to random places. So you're kind of just moving it onto a space in your model. OK, 
go. And then it's not quite comfortable, so I'm going to move it down. Might give it a tiny bit of a rotate, so it's a bit more comfortable. There we go. There we go. And then, can you see it's a bit too big for my bed? So we're going to just make it a little bit smaller because obviously it's for a lovely king size bed or something and I'm a bit cheap so I don't have one. <laughs> and so this is the scale tool and it can scale things in lots of different ways so you can squash it down, it can scale it evenly, it can scale it to one side. So what we're going to do is we're just interested in scaling it across so it actually just sits comfortably onto the bed because at the moment it's hanging over. So we're just going to squeeze it and I think that's all right. So there we go, that's my bed and that's my bedding made. And I didn't have to make all this complex shapes. <laughs> so it's nice and easy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find um, some bedside tables. And this is where it's nice to test different sizes of bedside tables so you know if they fit or not. So now I'm gonna say maybe Ikea bedside table. Right, so it gives you lots of different options. You can make things yourself as well, remember, if you choose to. Um, it just makes it a bit easier when you can, when you can download them. Um, let's go to the next page, see if I've got anything nice. So you can browse it as well, um, just to see if you've got anything that you prefer. Um, so, I think that's quite nice. And again, it's downloading. So we've got a little lady as well there. So you click away from the model again, and then it comes as a component. So you click on it to adjust anything you feel. We're going to get rid of. The lovely lady this gives you measurements which is great so you know what size everything is as well which is really helpful but we don't need that right now and then we're going to zoom in so what you can do is obviously use the tools the pan tool and the orbit tool to zoom in and we can see that the front is here so maybe we stick to having the white one and again, we're going to go to our rotate tool. We're going to rotate it because it's not the right angle. 90 degrees. And it's rotated it. And then again, we're going to go to our move tool. Now we're going to select the bottom of it. And we're going to put it at the side of our bed. There we are. So now I want to copy another one to the other side. And all I have to do is keep to the move tool because it's move and copy. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna press Alt. So when I press Alt, it gives me a tiny little plus at the side of my move, okay? And all you have to do is you click whatever model you wanna copy and it gives you a copy. And it's as simple as that. There we go. So now I've got lovely bedside tables on either side. And this is when you can decide, okay, actually that's a little far away or my bed needs to be in the middle and you can start to move things around into your space and have different options. Okay, so I think my room needs a bit of a curtain. So maybe we go and have a curtain so we can look at curtains. Quite nice. I'm finding all these beigey things. It must be a beige day. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, there we go. Oh, lovely. So again, to make these yourself, it will take absolutely forever. So it's really, really good to get it just from the SketchUp warehouse. And all we've got to do is we're going to move it, we're going to place it, and then we're going to test it. So it's a bit too high. We're going to go to the scale. We're going to push it down so it fits. We're going to make it longer so it fits across. And then shorter that way, just with our scale tool. So I think that looks quite good. Okay. And finally, maybe we just need some artwork. So again, you just type in artwork. And it gives you loads of artwork to pick from. Um, that's a bit dull, isn't it? Let's see, mm -hmm. don't like that. <laughs> um, let's see. Just do it. Sometimes you kind of do different words, or you can just carry on searching until you get something that you're quite happy with. So that lots of these components, you kind of click and click on them again because there's their folders and libraries of components. And then that's quite nice. I might just download this. So you see it's kind of, sometimes it comes on the ground. All you have to do is very similarly, you rotate it. But instead of rotating it on the blue axis, so we have to rotate it on the blue axis anyway, but you rotate it on the blue axis, but then all you have to do is you rotate it. So you click on the side of it, you see you get the green, you click across, and then you click 90 degrees. And hopefully that's rotated it up. So I think we've almost got complete room. There we go. So I think our room is ready for some photography. So this is a really good trick. When you, when you um, have photography or photographs of your room, the last thing you want, and when actually when you get real photographers or even state agents, you don't want a really narrow image of your, um, of your room. So the last thing that we're going to talk about at the bottom here is the camera position. So that little man with the X is where you're going to put your camera. And it's an average height. So as you can see here, you kind of can see a bit of the room, a bit of the walls, etc. but you can't see the whole thing. So we actually want to see the whole thing. This little trick lots of people don't know about, but that this is how you get state agent images, which will really help. So <clears throat> you want to find what's called a field of view. So you go to your camera on the top, or it'll be on the right hand ribbon in the free version. Um, just, okay. And you click on field of view. And this gives you a zoom sort of tool. So it gives you a magnifying glass and you can move this. So when you move this, the building kind of comes closer and closer to you. And if you can see at the bottom, on the bottom left hand corner, it says that it's now 71 degrees, and that's what we want. We don't want the usual eye level, which is 35 degrees. We want something around the 70 degrees, um, because like beyond that, it becomes a bit more, a bit too realistic. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back, we're going to go back to our little man with the X on it, 
and we're going to drop him at the edge of the room. Now you can see a lot more. So as soon as you drop your little man, this eye comes up. So this eye is for your mouse. So you just move your mouse around and it's like exactly like an eye. So you can look down, you can look up, you can look side to side, but that gives you a much, much nicer angle to see your room, okay? So now you've got your room and you've got your camera angle. What you want to do is you want to save your camera view. So you can always come back to this view because then you can take a snapshot of it. If you always make, if you make changes and everything like that, you can always come back to this camera view. So what you can do is you go, so you've got your ribbon on the right hand side and you'll have it all the way down here in the free version. Um, and you go to what's called scenes. And at the moment scenes is empty. So it gives you the opportunity to basically take a permanent snapshot. And you click on the plus button. And it gives you that scene. And you can kind of, so what you can do here is you can move around, so you can move up and down, etc. But you see that you've created a scene right on the top here. So that's scene one. Whenever you click on that scene one, it takes you back in. And what you can do with things like this is you can go to file, you can go to export, and you can export it as a 2D graphic. And that's how you get your visualization. So you um, create a 2D graphic of it. One little last thing to teach you is layers. Um, and I'll very briefly go through with you. Layers is really good because if you put things in different layers, so say you've got two types of bed, two types of curtains, or two types of wall arrangements or floor plan arrangements, you can put them on different layers. So you can see that bed sheets on a different layer and you can create a new layer. So you can say plus, and you can say curtains. And you turn on that layer, you go onto your curtains, you right click it, and you say entity info. So that's gives you information about what layer it's on. So the pop out comes up, it says on layer zero, you change that layer to the curtains layer. And then you can close that. And now that's in the curtains layer. If you go back to so selecting layer zero and you click off that curtain, it turns it off for you. And then you can have lots of different options. So you can have lots of different layers. So that was it. That's your scene. And um, you can export that image for yourself. You can always get back to scene one. You can create lots of different scenes as well. So you can, you know, stand in different locations and take lots of different images of your bedroom. So that was it from me. That was SketchUp. I hope that helped. That's fantastic. Thank you ever so much. Guys, have you got any questions for Mary? Do you want to just shout them out if you've got any questions? I hope that was simple enough to learn. <laughs> Actually, I have a, a little question. When yeah. you export your plans, yeah. um, is it possible to export them in PDF or something after? Or the person who will open it needs to have SketchUp? No, you can, you can export it to different things. So if I, I'll just try to share it again so share. That was an amazing tutorial by the way yeah really good <laughs> that was amazing so if we go to file and you can go to export 2d graphic yeah um so okay. you can get the option yeah, so you've got the option. Sorry, I've got everyone's faces right where I need it. 
just try and move it. Okay, hang on. Right. Okay. Um, so you've got JPEG. You click down, and you might not have all of this functionality on the free version, but you'll have some of it. You'll definitely have JPEG. Like I've got for the functionality of a DWG, so I can actually uh, give somebody a CAD file, an AutoCAD file, but you will have functionality of JPEG and PDF. Um, so you can always um, export it in that sense. And you also, also have options of how big, what kind of pixel level you can have it at. Um, normally it'll say use your screen size. Most people's screens are quite small. So click off that and you want at least a 3000 wide one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I had a I had a question, if I if I if I may, uh, Mary, that was absolutely um, superb, and you did it all in such a short space of time and covered an awful lot of ground. I've got two questions. Who would normally um, use that? Because you you made it look so easy, but I'm sure it would you know take days for someone who was just trying to teach themselves to do the stuff that you've done, all the tips and tricks that aren't normally known. So who would normally you would expect to, to use it? Would someone use it for DIY or developers or whatever? And then secondly, what would you charge for doing something like that on one room or several rooms for someone that wanted a mock up of a, of a building or a visualization? Um, so yeah, firstly, who would use that? Are you saying like who would provide that service or just how, who, who as or, like or who, 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 who or, use it? But, but so would developers normally use that to, 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 for themselves, but they would probably have to do an awful lot of training to get to the level that you're at? Or do you know just it's just architects that provide that service? So, um, so developers, um, some developers I know use it, but you kind of get used to using it. I know some people, I know May Green use things like, uh, SketchUp, I know that and Inside Property Investing now started to use SketchUp. So people are actually starting to use it and play around with it. It takes definitely it takes um, a little bit of time to get to know it, but um, it's the easiest one to use. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, if you if you can get the hang of it, it's great. Obviously, to do it at a larger scale, it's a lot more time consuming and you do need to know the tips and tricks of it. But a lot of, um, so not just architects, but kind of interior designers, um, kind of architectural drafts people, um, people not, not necessarily as an architect have to use it, they just need to have a design background. So a lot of people with design background, but spatial design background will know how to use SketchUp. And then how much does it tend to cost for doing, you know, uh, one room or, you know, like a, a four bed house or something? So if you, I'd say it depends how much information you provide for them. And um, so if you provide them with kind of a full set of plans, um, then they can, they, can they can transfer that into three dimensions quite well. Um, and it won't take them that much time. But if you um, just send them a survey um, and tell them to do it all by themselves and from scratch, I think that will be more of a design thing. So is, is it just to produce it, do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, cu I couldn't guess how much it would cost because I've never done it as a service or anything like that. Oh, but okay. I can definitely find out for you because a friend of mine does it for a service. <laughs> Oh, uh, what? Uh, okay. So I thought that you did. You uh, sell it as a service. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. I just use it. I just use it as an architect all the time, and we use it privately in our business as well. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Well, I can definitely find out. For you. I, I um, offer SketchUp as a service. If anyone's interested, um, yeah, drop a message. I also do private tutorials. So if anyone wants to take what we learned today to the next level or look at a specific project, I'd be more than happy to help. So guys, um, that's fantastic. Has anyone got any last questions? So we've come to the end of the session today. Um, 
and I just want to say thank you ever so much, Mary, for take, taking your time to give us so much detailed information. And remember to go and give her a follow on Instagram. Make sure you're following her to get all her latest tips and tricks as well. So thank you very much. Um, and don't forget to come and follow us on YouTube if you haven't already. So Property Sisters UK, where everything's going to be uploaded. Um, so that's fantastic. Has anyone got any quick wins? For the last um, for the last few minutes, has anyone got any quick wins of the week they want to share? Yeah. Must be someone. <laughs> it must be someone. No, uh, Amy. Amy, you must have a win. You've all got. I'll wins. say a quick one. Um, the kitchen on my current refurb started this week. Um, so it's, it's looking good. Uh, I was a bit scared at first because everything was locked down and the builders were just taking their time and now they're back on there and they've done a render on the outside. So I've done an external insulation and it looks the best one right now in the, in the row of four cottages. That one stands out so much now and the other neighbours have now asked the builders, can they render their houses? Uh, so that's been really good focus. Um, and now I'm on day 19 or 15 minutes of yoga every morning. So <laughs> that's, that's completely different, separate. But yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you so you much, Mary. That, that was just, that just blew my mind. I was like, wow, wow, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. But that was amazing. If anyone's got any questions or they get stuck or anything like that, give me a shout. Always happy to help the sisters. And Mary, there's lots of fantastic comments in the group chat that you've probably missed as well. Everyone's saying how amazing the session was. So thank you again. You might want to come back and have a read of, of what everyone's saying, but it's all fantastic stuff. There's a few quick wins in there as well. Um, Mart is a home stager um, and she provides 3D visualization, which is fantastic. And we've got Natasha and her staging service is taking off at the moment. So well done, Natasha um so that's fantastic guys um we're at the end of the session again today so big thank you to everyone um and have a lovely sunny weekend guys thanks very much guys thank, thank you mary thank you thank you